Well hello there and welcome to the channel and in this video I am going to be talking to you about the five mistakes to avoid when planting saffron crocus. Now before we get into that I want to give you a little bit of background history on this fantastic plant whose stamens are worth more than gold. In wait. So the saffron crocus, botanical name crocus sativa, is known to have originated from either Greek or Iran. The, uh, the boffins have yet to decide which one is which. But we, we do know that it's been in cultivation in the world for approximately 3,500 years. And despite its rather hot origins of bright sunshines and super dry summers, you can actually grow it in your garden here in the UK. And we know this to be true because saffron was grown in the Essex town of Saffron Walden, the clues in their name, for almost 200 years between the 16th and 17th centuries. All me back. Okay, I understand that saffron sounds very exotic and, and you can be forgiven for thinking that you can't grow it in your little back garden in suburbia, but the thing is you really can. In fact, saffron bulbs are so tough, they can tolerate temperatures down to minus 15 degrees centigrade, which is, you know, pretty cold in anyone's book. Um, but despite that, and despite the fact also that you can grow it in pretty much most soils, um, avoid clay please because it needs to be fairly free draining if you can put it in the sun in a free draining soil yes your saffron are going to grow and they'll come back year after year and it should all be fine but what isn't going to happen is your bulbs are not going to be producing an awful lot of these stamens because the whole point of growing saffron is for the stamens because you want to use it for flavoring and color and for showing off to your friends so if you want to um if you want to produce a decent bowl specifically for the crop of the stamens then things get a little bit more tricky because you have to you have to do certain things at a certain time in order to get the best out of your bulbs so this is where we start the five mistakes to avoid when growing saffron come on in right the first mistake to avoid is not having good enough drainage now back in the day when the crocuses were growing in this country they would grow them in something that was a little bit half of a dutch frame uh, if you don't know what that is just like a raised like a raised wall with a big plate of glass on top of it uh, or uh, or like a raised bed with dutch lights on it a dutch light is like a big glass panel in a frame so very similar things and um the reason why i did that is because if it's in a raised bed uh, that means drainage is far better and if it's got a glass panel on the top that means that rain can be kept out during the crucial time of year which we will talk about in a minute anyway first of all drainage so when we come in to plant it in a pot well I've done we've chosen quite a deep pot or one that's quite wide because when you're potting on your crocus bulbs they need to go in surprisingly deep you're looking at about um, four to six inches deep so something like that and the reason why these are so deep is because come the spring when it produces its its offshoots those uh, those young bulbs actually grow taller than the original bulb and you'll be keeping these bulbs in the ground for about three to five years because that's from about three years you'll start to get your uh, your best kind of flowering and it'll continue for a few more years and after about five years you lift them out and you replant it again so key thing is plant them quite deep like i say four to six inches in good drainage so what i'm going to do now is uh put in my compost and I'm going to do a little mix of my own and the reason for that is come to spring when those baby bulbs are forming they want to try and get as big as they can for flowering at the end of the year so I do need to have a decent amount of nutrition in them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some sand horticultural sand horticultural grit uh, a little bit of farm manure and some good old good old regular compost don't use ericaceous compost the reason for that is because it is acidic and crocus is likely to be a little bit alkaline let's fill it up nice farm now is this the best time to do it autumn it is the best time to do it yeah you're looking at really 
about um, August, September, because the your, your bulbs, when they've been harvested, they tend yeah. to be kept dry and hot, and they need that heat and they need that dry in order to initiate flowering. So come September, October, I think I might have said August there, but come the end of the summer, they should already been packed and kept dry and warm. So when we're planting now, they should be ready to start shooting out flower buds. So mm. that is a very good question. Grit. I'm here all week. Um, What's that one? Last one. sand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as soon as you put the words horticulture in front of any sand or aggregate, you can double that price. Mm -hmm. right, but, oops, sorry. Oh, really? Up. So, <laughs> yeah. The saffron crocuses. Mm -hmm. Can I get saffron from it? You can get saffron. Do you know what part of the crocus is saffron? It's the stamen, isn't it? Is the yeah, 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 yeah. That's fluffy, yeah, yeah. So, That's right, yeah. And it's worth a lot of money, isn't it? It's like uh, worth, I think, didn't it once, um, wasn't it once worth more than gold? In indeed, its yeah. So. yeah. Well, they often say, as I indeed myself said at the intro, just, uh, oh, if anyone yeah. was listening. <laughs> By weight in grams, uh, they are, at least as expensive as gold. But I think at the moment, yeah. because of the, uh, the cost of labour at the moment, oil. even more expensive. <laughs> yeah, oil is more, <laughs> it's, it's even more expensive. But yeah, and uh, yeah, very good. So yeah, even more expensive than gold right now because of the cost of labour. Wow. So, am I rich? <laughs> no. So how much were these bulbs? Uh, I think. Oh, here you go. Three ninety nine. For ten. Oh. It's a forty p bulb. Oh, that's not bad, is it? Yeah, it's not bad. It says twelve on there. Seriously? Yeah, twelve. Do you know? She's absolutely right. I can't count, and I admit that. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Crazy. Right. Right. Let's fill this up. That's it. You're going to have to turn down that gig at NASA, aren't you? Jesus, I mean, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> right. Right, are we? We are need ready. ready. Right, now you plant these, as I said, uh, four to six inches deep and four to six inches apart. Okay. And uh, the reason why you, you plant them quite far apart is, again, because of these uh, these offset bulbs that come off. They're, they're going to need space because each, you know, each subsequent year they'll be bit wider bit smaller so yeah and if we get too squished then they sort of stop flowering don't they or, or it restricts it reduces yeah it. It's a competition between bulbs yeah is, uh, it was a problem yeah so yeah. Um, as soon as they start sort of bumping into each other they don't like it no yeah mm. all right okay That's okay good. right all right um are we ready i mean to be fair i'm, I'm although yes you should be planting them four to six inches apart i am still going to stick every single one of these Bulbs in yeah, here. That's because it's in a container, isn't it? A slightly different container rules. Usually, you wouldn't have all these long shoots coming out of these. These should be, I'll be honest with you, they do look a little bit like leaf ones, but it should, once it gets in here, it should start producing the flower buds. Mm. But uh, normally, I think it's just because it's been, I don't know what, I don't know why they started spraying so early, uh, but they have. So yeah. we got to deal with it, but usually, they, they, you wouldn't have that on it, it would just be no. the spray bulb. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so way too close, but I'm still doing it. As my father used to say, do what I do, don't do what I say. That's Words to way. live by. Yes, what do the other way round? Words to live by, other way round. Yeah, not do as I do, do as I say. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Did I say it wrong? Yes, you did. I am having a time of it in Jesus. this video, aren't I? Can't count, can't speak. I know. Oh. Okay, right, so imagine that this is actually a wider pot and these are indeed Mutual four inches apart. <laughs> uh, this is what I have to live with every day, everyone. It's called getting old and not hoping. It's called getting 
people being married. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Before I met Lorna, I had a full head of hair. <laughs> While we're at yeah. Right. Totally me. Right, so that's planted. That is not enough soil and salt because you're doing it quite deep. Yeah. Um, so get rid of program. Like a rerun just to remind people in case they have forgotten. So yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll probably speed this bit up for the camera. Oh. <laughs> Slap that. He's thrown it at me across the table. Right. Now, the reason why we used to do a ropey pot is because this isn't I going... I was thinking that. Yeah, this isn't going to be an ornamental display. A lot of the time that this is going to be in production, it's going to be in the greenhouse. Okay. Um, but what we'll do, we'll talk about mistakes avoid number two. Explain why. Okay, so mistake number two. If you've grown bulbs in pots before, or even the grand, you'll find that they will be at risk from animals, especially when they're newly newly planted, or animals coming in, digging them up, taking them away. So you're looking at mice, you're possibly looking at squirrels. So whenever you're putting your uh, saffron crocuses in pots, look at all your cold frame, or your Dutch light system, then uh, they need protection from uh, from any animals getting in. So on a pot like this, you can either put on a, a glass panel or a perspex panel to stop them getting in, or you can put down a, a um, sort of some wire mesh. Um, but what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna put that straight into the greenhouse for now. And um, I don't get any mice in at the moment, so, so it'll be perfectly protected. But that's one thing you need to think of, is protection against uh, mice, rodents, anything that will dig it up, because you go to all this effort to, to plant them, and in a few days, it could all be gone seen it happen many times before so just keep an eye on that one stake number three is competition from weeds especially if you decided to plant these in the ground um, you need to make sure that you're always weeding always take them out because if the because uh, the weeds are going to be uh, going to be able to out compete for nutrition they're going to be able to out compete for water so because we're doing this in order to get the stamens at the end of the day uh, you will eliminate all that competition the only competition you want is with other saffron bulbs so make sure you keep it clean keep it neat and tidy keep it clean okay mistake number four this is arguably the most important thing that you, you really need to remember uh, from this when you're growing saffron crocus now uh, after the spring when um, it's put on all its growth all its foliage and the uh, the young bulbs the new bulbs coming through or putting on some size it's going to go or it's going to go and it's going to need a dormancy period from about june really up until about September. And that dormancy period needs to be hot and it needs to be dry. You don't want any water on it and you want it to heat up and bake. Uh, and that's why it, you, know, you grow them in a pot then you can move them around. You know, Put them in the greenhouse if you've got greenhouse. Put them in a hot sunny period under like the ease of your house so you don't get any water in it. They must have that hot dry period. You might be thinking you're doing them a favor by putting a bit of water on every now and again, but they've got to be kept hot and dry. And the reason for that is because that is what initiates the flowering. And if you don't do it, uh, then you're not gonna get those flowers. So you've gotta have that three month, four month period where it's baked hot and dry, as it would do in its native habitat. Okay, now overwintering. Overwintering is important because if you're growing them in this country, then you've got, a, you've got the issue of a lot of rain, uh, sort of hard frost, and um, issues with, with, with it being damp where the roots are in the soil. So while the bulbs themselves can tolerate very low temperatures um, for short periods of time, uh, it's the, it's the, if it's gonna be an extended period of, of real cold, then you wanna put on a little bit of protection on the, uh, on, on, on the surface. Now, if it's in the ground, then you might be looking at putting like a bed of straw down uh, or a, a dry mulch, such as uh, butt chips, um, or, like I say, because it's in the pot, what we're doing, you can move them into a greenhouse. Um, I mean, down here on the south coast, we, we've, we've not had anything harder than about minus eight. Uh, yeah, minus eight is probably as, as cold as it's got. But if you're trying to grow it further north, and a saffron walden is further north in Essex, then the extra protection is required. But again, with the old system that they used to use with the Dutch lights, you know, it gives them a little, um, little pocket of air which helps uh, prevent that sort of hard frost getting into the soil. So 
winter protection is kind of the uh, the last thing you need to be aware of and like I say if you're growing in pots which is what I would recommend really to get the best out of them then put them back in that greenhouse you know and if you need to bring them into a um, uh, unheated protected space like a like a garage or something then, then do that because it the light's not important if the bulbs under the soil it doesn't come into it anyway mm. before I finish there's just a couple of little bits I just want to mention right just to mention come the spring when they start putting out their leaf it is fine to give them a little bit of fertilizer because it helps encourage those baby roots to uh, so those baby bulbs to grow so give it a little bit of fertilizer maybe once a week you know not too much but just enough to keep it going um, the second thing I want to talk about is companion planting because your crocuses are a risk from pests or pain so consider companion planting garlic plants with them because that does help to keep a lot of things down on them and the last thing really is is this sort of crop that you planted um, as I said before it's going to be performing at its best after about three years but by the end of about five years you need to consider lifting it and uh, starting again with fresh compost not the same old compost so um, on that fifth year once once the uh, the plant enters its dormancy period in about June that is the time to lift it you don't need to plant them straight away. Again, you can keep them in the bag, keep them somewhere warm and dry, then plant back September, October, like we've done today. Right, and so there you have it. Five mistakes to avoid when growing saffron crocus. Uh, well, we hope you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to see more, then consider subscribing to the channel and clicking that notification bell because then you will be notified by YouTube whenever we publish a new video. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you've got anything you'd like to add, then leave those in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.